Hello, welcome and good evening. And today I want to show you the new firmware upgrade for the open source scan converter. This is a device that I already showed twice and uh, for the uninitiated it's an upscaler that converts analog inputs into analog video inputs into digital HDMI video signals. And this is something that you really want to have if you have a retro PC like me or an old games console, in my case this is the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive. And there are a lot of other devices that you can hook up to this device. There are cheaper and smaller ones and um, they might work, but I tried quite a few of them out. Uh, for example, this uh, generic Chinese uh, RGB upscaler, but this basically only works with uh, arcade machines and stuff like that and doesn't work, uh, even though it has VGA input and HDMI output, it doesn't work with the PC style resolutions very well and it has a few other drawbacks. I might still hack something together with this, um, but right now it doesn't do me any good. So uh, a while back I uh, spent the money to get this device and I haven't regretted it. Um, it has quite a few inputs. It has got a SCART input where I hook up the Mega Drive using a SCART cable, um, which you can link to in the video description. It has component RGB and uh, I think other component video in, but uh, no S video and no composite. Uh, which is needed for stuff like the C64 or other old consoles, but it has VGA in. So um, I hook up my PC here and the Mega Drive via the SCART and out comes um, HDMI video and audio. Here's the audio and so I can hook up um, my sound devices here as well, like the MT32 or the PC uh, Sound Blaster stuff. And it has a nice little display. So this is an open source project and you see that it is very nice, but uh, of course the case is made from acrylic laser cut stuff. So it's pretty open and you can see already that it collected quite a bit of dust on my desk, but it works fine. So um, this has uh, firmware version 0 0.81 currently, which was the current version of firmware when I bought it and um, the newest one is 0 0.84 and the easiest way to flash that is to actually take a micro SD card, write the firmware image to it using Etcher or some other program and then just putting it in and flashing it. We'll do that in a minute. Uh, there's also the possibility to use the JTAG but um, most people will be better off with using just the micro SD card. Um, yeah, one disadvantage that I notice is that you have to overwrite the whole SD card and you can't just put the file on the SD card. That would be a nice addition to the bootloader or to the firmware itself probably to be able to parse um, the file as is. So now I have to really format a micro SD card, but it's a minor issue I would say. All right, so let's go ahead, flash the firmware, check out the release notes, what has changed, and then evaluate if the thing still works. A quick look at the Genesis shows. This is the old version and um, 0 0.81 actually produced a very nice picture and I didn't have much problems or any at all with the Genesis. The PC on the other hand was a bit fiddly to set up because um, the OSSC is actually made for consoles. So let's have a look at the OSSC website. Uh, a little bit scrolling down, you can jump to the firmware update section and there it says uh, the ways, the different ways that you can update the firmware. And it also gives you the change log and the roadmap. And I will talk a little bit about the change log in a minute. But first let's write the SD card so I downloaded the image, drop it into Etcher, and it will warn me that it's not a bootable image, but it doesn't matter here, we can write it anyway. And then we just simply select the drive and uh, 
uh, you have to make sure that you write to the correct drive and not overwrite any of your installed disks, obviously. Uh, in the macOS you have to enter your password and then it takes just a few seconds for the flashing to finish and then you can remove the SD card and put it into your OSSC. Turn it on and uh, then press the menu button on your remote and go down to the settings and there you will find the sub-menu option for the firmware. And uh, once you found it, I'm looking for it, here it is. Once you found it, uh, it will say it's validating the image and it will ask you to press 1 for update or 2 for no. So I press yes here or 1 and it takes a few seconds again because it's a pretty small firmware. It's verifying the flashing process and it will say please restart. So that's what we'll do here, just switching it off and then after a few seconds turning it on again and you can see it's 0.84. So the new features of the firmware are mainly in the HDMI compatibility department, but there's also a 384 by 240 optimized mode, which is probably useful for some older consoles. And it says that it has improved 400p support, which would be interesting for the PC, because the text mode is 720 by 400 and uh, all the Major DOS games are 320 by 200, which is a line doubled 400p mode. Um, however, I did not see a lot of improvement there. I still had to tweak my timings, and we'll come to that in a minute. There's also um, more uh, a quicker loading of profiles and uh, some other hacks for more obscure devices. And I think um, many of these changes won't apply to a lot of people. Let's see what the other two versions brought that were before that. So versions 0.82 and 0.83 I skipped as well, so there are more presets and optimized modes there. Um, pretty interesting is the um, low pass filter, the 34. 35 megahertz low pass filter. If you have like noisy input, you can use that to clean up the image. That's quite nice. There's also some scanline updates and fixes and some advanced timing option updates, which lets you fine tune more of these parameters. Most interesting in 0.82 was probably the automatic input detection feature. Um, you have to enable this in your profile. Otherwise, it won't scan, but if you enable it, it will scan the inputs and when it detects the sync signal, it will lock onto that input and switch to that. So no need to press anything on your remote if you switch on your console, for example. All in all, there's a really big set of features, but um, I didn't notice really much difference. And uh, next we will have a look at a few games to see if you can spot any differences. So the Mega Drive games here, Aladdin and Next, Indiana Jones and also Sonic don't show uh, any faults, I think, that are pretty obvious. And it actually looks to me the same as in 0.81. The quality is uh, really, really good on the OSSC and I can't complain. So although the update was without errors, I can't tell the difference, so for me probably it doesn't make any difference if I update or not, but this may vary depending on what devices, HDMI, HDMI devices or consoles you have hooked up to the OSSC. However, a completely different picture is shown when you hook it up to a PC, because as usual, without all the profiles and settings, the image is shifted off-center and completely weird. I was hoping that the 400p mode would be now more PC compatible or that we have like an auto centering option that many monitors from the 90s already had, but sadly this is not yet the case. So I had to fall back onto my uh, timings that I figured out a year back or so and here they are, so feel free to pause. These are the advanced timings that you have enter to enter for the 
400p mode and the 480p mode if you want to have usable VGA picture quality. One thing that I noticed is this year, if you don't use uh, 2x line doubling on the 400p mode, you can get very weird Mori effects. So better to activate it because you can obviously see that there is a great difference between those. And as you can see as well, Windows runs also very well at 640x480 resolution using my custom timings from before. And as will also some other SVGA games that use the same resolution. And the standard VGA or EGA games running 200 lines also work as you can see. And yeah, after like over a year of updates that I missed out, I must say, I don't see a lot of uh, differences that are valuable to me. But your mileage may vary, especially if you have weird HDMI equipment that need better compatibility and things like that, or have some, some very exotic consoles, I guess, then it should also help. Thank you for watching, and uh, I hope you liked the video and it was helpful to you. If so, please do subscribe, give me a like, put some comments down there, and see you next time.